Good day, and today we're going to have a short little introduction to the author, O. Henry. Now, O. Henry was born under the name William Sidney Porter. He was the son of a doctor and an artistic mother, and he was born on September 11, 1862, in North Carolina. At age 15, O. Henry's formal schooling ended, and he took an apprenticeship at his uncle's pharmacy. Now, shortly after his marriage in 1887, O. Henry began perfecting his short stories, which he previously had written simply just to entertain his friends. Now, to pay the bills, he took on a job as a banker and worked as a reporter and an occasional cartoonist for a Houston newspaper. Eventually, O. Henry wrote around 300 short stories, about 65 in the year 1904 alone, during his 10-year literary career. Nearly all of O. Henry's stories include his signature surprise ending, or a snapper, as he called it. Nowadays, we call it the twist ending, where you're expecting one ending to happen, but almost exactly the opposite happens instead. Now, O. Henry's own life was full of twists and turns, or snappers, making his interest in the surprise twisty endings understandable. For instance, while serving time in prison, O. Henry, in the right place at the right time, saved a warden who had overdosed on arsenic. As a reward, O. Henry was allowed to roam freely about the jail, telling stories and gathering stories from fellow prisoners. Now, a couple of good quotes that he has on his philosophy of writing are, I'll give you the whole secret of short story writing. Rule number one, write short stories that please yourself. There is no rule two. In 1902, O. Henry also wrote, You can't write a story that's got any life in by sitting at, write, at a writing table and thinking. You've got to get out into the streets, into the crowds, talk with people, and feel the rush and throb of real life. That's the stimulant for a story writer. Now, O'Henry's exemplified his philosophy in his variety of life experiences and travels. First of all, he was born and raised in North Carolina. He spent his young adulthood in Texas. He also spent some time living in New Orleans before he gets to New York. Now, he escaped the police who tried to arrest him on false charges of embezzling $1,000 from the bank where he worked. Because of that, he fled to Honduras, but he was eventually captured, went to trial, and was found guilty and sentenced to five years in a federal penitentiary in Columbus, Ohio. Now, upon release after three years for good behavior, O'Henry will move to New York City, where his popularity as a writer soared. Now, in O'Henry's stories, his region of choice for his setting is New York, although he also wrote stories set in the West, the Deep South, and New Orleans. He also convincingly wrote stories about a variety of people, crooks, chiefs, policemen, cowboys, aristocrats, con men, poverty-stricken, and millionaires. Now, the Civil War also happened just prior to O. Henry's birth, and you'll see that some of that will influence into his short stories. Now, a year after O. Henry's birth, Abraham Lincoln also issues the Emancipation and Proclamation, and in 1865, Lincoln is assassinated. And so a lot of this is going to start influencing the writers who are coming right as O. Henry is coming of age. You're also going to see the rise of small press publishing around 1904, making it possible for more people to have access to a variety of literature. And this is going to coincide with O. Henry's rise to fame. So once again, what do we want to remember O. Henry for? His, he's very famous for his snapper or twist endings to his stories. He's also famous for writing about ordinary people. Just about anybody could be his main character. He also like, likes to make his readers root for the underdog, somebody who you know from the beginning is just not going to win. They're just not going to get what it is that they want. And yet, you still cheer them on knowing that that possibility is not there. Thanks so much for stopping by for this really quick look at O. Henry. If you'd like to learn more about some of his short stories, check out my Learning Language Arts channel, or let me know in a comment down below which short story you'd like me to cover. And as always, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Take care.